<laughs> Wonderful. Okay, thank you so, so much. Um, so Anna, what drove you to, to explore this piece through documentary theater and what challenges and benefits arose from that? Well, um, as I say in the play, originally I was not going to make it documentary theater. I was going to, <laughs> I had this vision that was terrible <laughs> of making it fictional and this idea. And then of course, when I met Charzad, that, that was clear that was not going to fly. And this was not the story that that was worthy to pursue. Um, and really what happened when we went to the mountains and lived with the Kurdish fighters was, you know, Sharzeb was doing all these interviews while she was there of the fighters, audio interviews. And she would always give me, I didn't know, um, you know, I didn't know the full Tinda story, for example, when I was there, but Sharzeb would always tell me a, like a little gist, a little summary of what, she, what each fighter told her. Um, and so it was while we were there that I suddenly realized, you know, we didn't we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, in terms of what play we were writing, we basically just realized, as I say in the play, that I should go. Um, but it was after hearing, you know, all these snippets of the stories and and meeting the fighters and you know hearing about their lives that I realized that um, that these women's stories are the play. And so uh, so I guess that turns out to be documentary. Uh, theater. <laughs> I didn't actually really know that was a term fully or that that's what we were making maybe is more accurate. Um, and then, you know, in, I guess, in order to give context for the women's stories, it was, we were, we, you know, we spoke with um, artistic director, Andrea Donaldson and Bea, our Bea Pisano, our director, and, you know, just sort of this realization that we had a lot of challenges or we had some challenges and complications that happened um, with us being there. And so that was sort of a good frame and context for the play. That's so interesting that it, you kind of stumbled upon it through the research and it it's really a, such a dynamic, interesting story. Um, Sharzad, prior to this play, you've made a number of documentary films and I'm curious, how are you finding uh, theater, documentary theater making different? And have you discovered any benefits of documentary theater that are not available when creating documentary film? Hmm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm discovering so many things through this, uh, this play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm discovering uh, so many beautiful people I connected to. I'm connected to theater that uh, I always loved, but I never been connected to. And the most important thing is a community because as a documentary filmmaker, I go do my interviews, everything. Then I come and I sit in front of my screen and then I do editing on my own, I'm alone. But for, the, for theater, it's different. This piece was different. It's, uh, I had my community of Kurdish fighters, I, my friends and everybody. But uh, with this place, since we start writing, my community grow bigger and bigger. I learn, I, I found out about all these artists that connected and every day in rehearsal, it's I am working with the community, with group of women, a group of artists that to create. This is, I guess this, the most important thing for me, uh, this play brought, um, of course, this we are telling this story that I was not, I didn't, I wouldn't have dreamed that some someday it's gonna, go on stage but <laughs> but this you this, were gonna go on stage <laughs> yes i'm gonna go on stage exactly my, and uh, and 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 this all these all these um, incredible actors and ama our amazing amazing director they all so generous with me uh because i'm not i'm not an actor i don't <laughs> and they're so generous to me accepted me in their community and and i love i love i guess the most important thing uh, for me i learned different from uh, a documentary film is this incredible community that i am connected to such a beautiful answer i wasn't that i wasn't expecting that answer and i love it so much and that is one of the really powerful things about theater community generally mm -hmm. um so yeah okay we have a little bit more time um anna since you stumbled into documentary theater what are some 
kind of practical tools and even attitudes that you found have been useful to you during this new process of um, theater making? Um, I think like this is, a, it's funny thing to call it practical, um, but it's a tool. That's something that uh, Bea talks a lot about in the room because she always says she's so humble. She always, you know, this is a woman who's traveled all over the world, she's done theater all over the world and trained so much with all these amazing artists. And she brings all of that experience in the room. And one of the things she says over and over is find the poetry. So even though this is documentary um, theater and this is verbatim theater and this, you know, we experienced this, we're playing ourselves, you know, look for the poetry. And so there's um, not like, literal poetry even though we do have poems of the fighters that the fighters wrote in the play as as we did we started the play with um but to find those moments you know very much between the fighters and ourselves um you know uh even like a small example i would say that i think she she said i can't remember if you remember that charzad but when charzad who is playing um javana says um uh when we were talking about the little black birds that line the the wires. I said, little black birds on the wires. And there were a lot of huge grasshoppers that had infested the mountain. And um, Giovanna said, um, uh, Kurds, are, the birds are Kurds. And uh, the, um, they eat the grasshoppers, which are ISIS, like Kurds eat ISIS, <laughs> like the metaphor, you know, um, that she, you know, I was just coming up with in that moment as a joke, you know, because um, the Kurds have a great sense of humor and, and the fighters joke and laugh so much. And we had so much laughter while we were there. So, you know, just lots of um, just, you know, that's not something I really thought about when we went into the room um, there, you know, and then at the end of the play, this, I guess you could say, like, I guess we do, this was poetic or I knew it was poetic, but we, I don't know if we, this isn't really giving away the play, but Sharzad at the end of the play, um, we include a, a, a dream that, that Sharzad has based on a conversation that she had with one of the fighters, Paimon. And it's a very visceral, um, imagistic, beautiful dream of her being in the mountains with one of the fighters they're talking about their future. And that is so poetic, <laughs> you know, that's that's poetry, you know, without being literal poetry again, it's just these poetic moments. So sort of in contrast with what you would expect of documentary theater, which is like, I don't know, makes me think like hard, fast, um, you know, accurate, you know, <laughs> factual, which we have, because we have to give context for people who don't know the history of the Kurds of Kurdistan, but to juxtapose it constantly with finding those moments of beauty the moments and there were so many moments where we were connecting you know constantly connecting with the fighters you know um this group of women these warm generous beautiful you know strong courageous women that were so generous with us and to to find the poetry in that and trying to relay that either in the text or on stage so that's um that's uh, that's something that I didn't expect. And I guess other than that, um, I just learned so much. I always say this to Charzad hates it, I'm sure, but <laughs> I do learn so much from Charzad. She is a mentor <laughs> and I'm learning so much from Bea and I learned so much from the women. So I guess just, you know, um, having such an open heart and humble, you know, I, you have to be humble because you don't know. They're the experts, I'm the, I'm the student. I love that so much. Yeah, that like the practical tool is actually disposing of practicality and looking to the poetry. It's so true. And it really makes you realize how real life is filled with poetry. Everyone is so poetic and uh, it's just around us. I I'm going to um, segue to Tessa's question, which um, sort of touches on this. Um, and yes, uh, Judy, there's a link in the chat um, that has a, a link to the show for free tickets if you're interested in seeing the whole show. Tessa says, asks rather, would you consider the shift, uh, and I'll, I'll throw this to Sharzad or Anna, whoever feels most compelled to answer. Would you consider the shift in documentary slash factual text to poetry text, the most challenging writing challenge of this piece? If not, what was? So, I mean, if that doesn't relate, what was the most challenging writing, uh, or rather, what was the biggest writing challenge of the piece? <laughs> Uh, 
to have poetry in the text, it wasn't, it wasn't challenging at all because every moment with the fighter was full of poetry. And it was so easy. Every sentence they were telling us, it was full of, it was poetry. It was poem they were telling us. It was just, uh, that wasn't really difficult. The most challenging part was cutting. That was killing me. <laughs> Each time we should cut because uh, the original script me and Anna wrote was three hours. And uh, it was then of course, working with amazing Bea, with Andrea, and it was not possible to ask people to sit. I, I still doubt that, but okay. <laughs> But it was not, uh, it was not uh, reasonable to ask people to sit for three hours and listen to, and of course that was the most uh, challenging for me to cut for real. Some, sometimes I was, I, I just, I was crying, cutting. You said it was like a dagger in her heart. See, it was. It also speaks poetry. <laughs> <laughs> it was so difficult for me. And, and I was, uh, and, but uh, I, because I guess the most important part uh, thing for the, in this play for me, because we, we didn't create these characters. These characters are real and it's, it's their, they, it, they are, it's their world. It's not our world. And the poetry is belong to them because they each and every one of them are poets. Incredible, but cutting, cutting for me was the most challenging part. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yes, actually, I'll ask one more question and then we will close. And that uh, is just around what did get cut that maybe you were most attached to? Is there one image or moment or story or anything that was um, cut? Or uh, is there a part in the piece itself that you felt most transformed by? You can choose between those two options. Mm. I'll, I'll throw it to, to either of you. <laughs> I think we really did fight for the parts that meant so much to us. So mm -hmm. I, I think, I, I hope you agree, Sharza, that I think that everything we really needed to have in there did actually make it in the play. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> um, in terms of the changing, I would say um, there's a part in the play where I talk about the different, um, we went to an art camp where all the fighters were artists and they spoke about um, how the art camp and the military camp or the art section and the military section, there's no difference. And um, gorilla is gorilla and um, my instrument is my weapon. And so that really, um, that really meant something to me to hear this idea of um, art being a weapon that I had never heard it articulated that way before is maybe the best mm -hmm. way to put it. And also given the circumstances of where we were, we're, we're with women who are facing extreme danger. Mm -hmm. So so many parts was for me touching, of course, I, I'm sure for Anna, but uh, one of the stories that I, I was, uh, we, we didn't add it because we, did, we couldn't bring the whole story of that fighter in. Uh, it was jo Giovanna's life because we couldn't. And the, this, this, this is a story of this, this brave fighter who was face to face with ISIS. And, uh, and uh, he was the one going before everybody to clear everything before then, then the others can come join her, join her and she, she become face to face with ISIS and they, they, sh they shot her. They, 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 I, I don't know how many bullets. Yeah, like a barrel full of barrel bullets. Barrel bullets on her body that, but she, she survived. She could escape with all that and uh, she survived. She was our, she was our translator and our, our guide through the, a supermodel that I mentioned. Supermodel, she mentioned <laughs> exactly. She's so beautiful, so beautiful, and uh, and she was wearing sunglasses because she always had headache because of the, all these uh, bullets. There yeah. were many, many of the bullets that are still in her body, some of the parts in her body. But but oh, many. It's uh, I, I guess I accepted in one point because. If we wanted to bring all this story, we, we never could end the uh, end the play. But uh, that uh, one we tried. We tried yeah, with we that tried one. so hard. We, we tried like it was in the draft when we came into the room last week. Yes. And then Sharzad started to say it. We were all like, oh, why are you saying that right now? <laughs> like it doesn't, you know, because uh Sharzad 
told me this story once we got on the plane because Giovanna told you that very last, right? Like just before we left. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of was an additional story and we yeah. tried, but it just didn't work with the rhythm. It didn't work with the rhythm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's, that's a little devastating. It's not in there. It maybe it's a book one day maybe yeah. you'll and there there is the podcast as well we have been kind of keeping this um close but there will be a podcast version of this play as well if anyone's not able to make it to the actual play we'll be releasing the podcast so I don't know if this story made it into the podcast um I don't think it did it was one of the ones but we will put it when the play hopefully will be published we'll put it in there yes, yes. <laughs> and truly I think with Charzad took beautiful photos in, on previous trips and I think on this trip as well and yeah. it definitely could be a book I think um but thank you so so much to you both for sharing your piece um for sharing your thoughts around it and around creating it it was so powerful to hear. Um, and thanks for everyone for joining us. If you're interested in attending the show, you can register for free. Uh, Amanda will pop the link into the chat. And if you're watching the recording, it will be below the video. Um, as I said, we'll be having a podcast as well that we'll release uh, of the play. And we're also sharing for free Sharzad's powerful documentary, Dancing for Change, which expands on the issues uh, explored in Children of Fire. Um, and we'll be shouting all that out on our social media and in our newsletter. You can check in on our website. Um, but thank you so much for everyone who's joined us and um, have a great rehearsal week uh, and uh, looking forward to seeing the show. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, bye, bye. Thank you. Bye.